too. It's like three million on the market at the moment, so I recommend buying it. It's worth the price. Uh, I've seen the wiki now, and it does 15.4 damage per shot, which is pretty epic if you ask me. This SMG is one point away from being as strong as a corpse shooter. That's 350 round capacity. Pretty good, really good for a machine gun actually. And damage per hit is 30.7, which is pretty great if you ask me. This thing is gonna be an amazing weapon. For me, I'm gonna go poor. I already have 9 mil left in my bank. This thing is quick and is fat and is deadly. So, so far, the firing rate is really great. How's it going everybody? My name is Armando. Welcome back to the channel guys. So guys, before I get into this video, I just want to say a few things. First of all, I am not hating on this game, alright? I've been with it for too long to even consider hating it. Yeah, there are things that I wish that could change, but if anything, this is just purely opinions, alright? So don't take this as facts. I mean, granted, some of you might agree with the video, but like I said, I just want to spark a bit of conversations in the comment section below. What do you guys think and what do you guys feel like should be changed in the game. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Did you guys notice it? A pattern that this game has been following for a very long time, ever since the Death Frontier 2 the era. A pattern that not only drove many players away, but eventually just gave up on the game altogether. A pattern that still sparks a controversy till this day. It can still be found in the forums, and different tier Facebook pages, and different tier YouTube videos. There is basically found wherever you look. And what am I talking about? The power scaling, aka pay to win. Now we've all heard about pay to win. It's not just only in Death Frontier 3D. It's in many other games that we find both fun and amusing. Death Frontier 3D is just a little example. But how did this get out of control? How did it go from such an amazing and fun zombie game? to a game that now requires 100 implants, drugs, and a thousand dollar weapon in order to be in the top ranks. Well, I'm here to discuss that with you. But first things first, let's look at the state of Dead Frontier. Dead Frontier 3D was a lot more different than it was today when it was first introduced to the public. For starters, my computer couldn't really handle the graphic change. But I remember vividly being excited by the 3D graphics and how the zombies were going to change in terms of pattern and attacks. Not much was introduced yet, except for a few new bosses and the Apples attacks. Interiors were still being experimented on, and new bosses weren't even thought of at that time, and ways to interact with the rest of the community was still being put at work in this new 3D game. Other than that, most of the weapons of 2D were transferred to 3D, eventually I deemed the game unplayable and left it for a long time. Fast track a few months in advance, I did get a better computer. Although I was still new to PCs and had no idea what a graphics card even was, I logged in for the first time in months and realized there were a few new weapons. The Epics, also known as the Elites of its time. Back in the day, it was mostly the 577 Rex and the Vulcan that made a difference when it came to hunting down the infected. The community was still growing and that exposure was at the top of his level. Clans were being revived like Void and Shadow and the time can be described in a simple word. Fun. Everything was a challenge. PvP was fair. And other than the sync issues, the game was just fun to sit down, relax, and interact with the community. Eventually though, the community wanted more changes to the game, so Admin decided an easy way to not only keep his fans happy, but at the same time, see a bit of revenue. On December 1st of 2011, the introduction of drugs was introduced. At the time, it was pretty much game breaking. It changed the whole way Death Frontier was meant to be played in terms of competing in top survivor or top player killer. If you were caught without drugs while doing either of the two, you were most likely going to be left behind in the ranks and pretty much just end up losing at the end of the week. Although it changed the way the game was being played, it wasn't so much as pay to win just yet. Sure, the 30 credits needed to buy the drugs was a little pricey, but once you get a good idea of how to merch or even looting the NEZ, you can easily buy one with just a few hours worth of looting or merching. So not everyone was left behind. Of course, the Ultra Boost was still looming in the dust shop, and the riches of the rich found a purpose to waste 250 million in the game. Granted, only a few players had these boosts at the time, since 250 million in the game currency was a bit out of reach for everyone that played the game. We still had the same old epics and people were loving the idea of being able to level up even faster in the game with the help of these boosts. But once again, we have a community that cannot really stay happy for too long and began to demand new updates from the admin. Upon seeing how well this introduction was handled by the community, admin decided to introduce some new artillery to the game. 
The arrival of the corpse weapons really began to change the flow of the game. Not only did you have a weapon that almost equaled the power of the dust mag, but you had other variants of a sniper, pistol, and grenade launcher, as well as melee. People were ecstatic as well as myself, and I went ahead and bought the shooter and a destroyer. These weapons made the game a lot more easier at the time as the white zone infected were not yet introduced. So with these new weapons being brought to the game, it gave us new ways of running for top survivor and top player killer. At this time, the only OP weapon that still existed was the GAL-19, and if you were to acquire one, it would either be through a rare clan or paying almost 500 million in-game dollars for one, if not more. The power scaling was beginning to get a little noticeable, but nothing too crazy just yet. Sure, the damage boost played a huge part in this competitive side of the frontier, but everyone was pretty much equal. Ammon eventually began to secretly leak a huge update that was coming to the game and was going to change the way the players would have to approach the infected. At this time, the legendary weapons were being introduced one by one. Nothing too crazy, but weapons that free to play players can easily purchase and have fun while hunting the infected. Everything was looking awesome for the game, and at this time I joined the famous clan called Shadow. Death Frontier Facebook fan pages and the community was growing larger and larger as well as the subscribers I was gaining on YouTube. It looked like I was going to be playing this game for a long time, until the stupidest decision was made in the game. The return of the GAL-19. You know, I might as well just quit the game right now. You know, I have nothing left. Unlimited ammo, really ammo. You're getting that desperate. You know, credit fraud, scamming, hello? You think it's good to bring back a limited ammo GAL-19? You brought, you're gonna bring this on yourself. And you know what else? You just gave a clear message that the game is dying. You know how I know this? If the game wasn't dying, you wouldn't be forced to putting all this up. All this up. You wouldn't be forced to putting these two up since the game is doing so well. There's a reason why there, why there were only five or seven of them in the game or ten. There's a reason why there's like two or three limited Gal-19s. You know why? They're considered OP. Not only did the return of the GAL-19 massively destroy the balance of the game, but Admin even introduced an unlimited version of this weapon. Sure, you can say we had an unlimited weapon in the past, but nothing could describe the sheer anger this brought to my head. The marketplace was pretty much taking a huge drop in value, and now the majority of the top players had this weapon. Thus, the competitive side of the frontier was all but shattered. Everyone and their dogs were buying these weapons from the credit shop like they were candy, and those that had it from Death Frontier 2D felt like they were cheated from. Granted, many people were ecstatic to have such a powerful weapon being brought back to the game and being given a chance to experience the power of the GAL-19. Even though I always wanted to own a GAL-19, the fact that hundreds and hundreds of other players had this weapon made me realize that there was no longer a skill gap. Those few that bought the unlimited GAL-19 showed how much of a mistake it was to not only have the regular version, but a big mistake to introduce an unlimited version. Top survivor was pretty much one-sided, and top player killer more or less had a little chance to survive. Of course, people realized that the game was going to reach a point where the old members of the community will be fed up with the game. Many forms in the Death Frontier discussion tab were being made to purposely attack the admin of bringing this back, and there was even a bit of turmoil within the community. Eventually though, around this time, Shadow was disbanded, and I decided to quit the game and just start my life in college. Upon returning to the game after my one year absence, it was very apparent that the Death Frontier that I knew from back then no longer existed. There was no longer any skill required, all you really needed was a credit card and boom, you were a high ranking player. A weapon called the Wraith Cannon was introduced and they really proved that the game was just pay to win up to this point. Limited edition implants were worth 1k credits were also being introduced to the game, fetching for about 100 million in-game currency. Eventually, I felt no reason to play this game until I met a clan called Fear of the Perfect Dark. Upon entering this clan, they helped me complete my goals of acquiring the Wraith Cannon, the X Dusk Enforcer, and the Ultimate Drug Boost. I have basically maxed out my account at this point, but I was still at a loss for playing this game. Most of my fan base has left me, but for some reason, I never really left this game, no matter how broken it was, until another few years later. Fast track to today, and here we are. Regardless of how broken the game may be, I still enjoy making videos for you guys and the gameplay of Death Frontier. Sure, I wish none of this power scaling issue existed, but at the same time, it is apparent that Admin has noticed it. He introduced weekly events that gave both gold members and non-gold members a chance to acquire money, experience, and make the gameplay a lot more easier. There are also the seasonal weapons that can compete with high grade weapons such as the Hair Razor and the Bloody Machete. Sure, the game is far from perfect, and even now there are people contemplating whether or not the whole power scaling issue will ever be resolved such as the hair razor being really close to the X dusk mag and a post saying, hey, should we have unlimited X dusk since you know I see no reason in grinding for this? But other than that, there's still reason why we still play. Whether it may be nostalgia or because it's simply fun, no one knows. 
All I know is, no matter how much the game is criticized, we will always be here for the day that Admin one day may post that he will be unable to afford paying for the servers. Until that day comes, let's just pick up our weapons, go into the inner city, and mow down some zombies. This is Hermano signing out, and I'll see you on the outside.